my website right now and download my free course on alternate picking mastery. It contains five essential exercises that will take you to alternate picking mastery faster than you can imagine. And then I've included my method of how to lay out a practice plan in just one to two minutes that will absolutely boost your results like nothing you ever tried before. So go download it right now. It's free. melodic minor there. Um, this video is about a speed trick, which is really, uh, it might not seem like, you know, we want tricks that, yeah, can I get that tomorrow? Can I learn to play ultra fast tomorrow? Um, but this is really one of the huge ones because I discovered uh, relatively late in my development, unfortunately, uh, because if you haven't watched the previous video, please go back and do so, uh, about legato, the hammer-ons and pull-offs technique. But I discovered pretty late what mastering legato, hammer-ons and pull-offs, can really do for your playing. And uh, you can really master that technique at a level that most people, you know, they don't even realize that it, legato, hammer-ons and pull-offs, it's not just not fretting, the, you know, unfretting and fretting the notes without your right hand. If you have enough distortion on the sound, you can just, you know, play any lick, but just don't pick it. And then you'll, you know, remove your fingers and put your fingers on the frets and it will give some kind of sound, right? And if you put distortion to it, it sounds like something, right? And, and, and that's why most of us really never really look into deeply enough how good we can become at this technique. And the cool thing about this technique is that it's, it's the easiest road to playing fast. No, is everything about playing fast, Klaus? No, it's not. But that's just one of the elements of playing, right? And fast, what is that? You need to be able to play the notes you play at a certain level of speed, otherwise it doesn't make musical sense, right? If you have to play Itsy Bitsy Spider-like. You'll never get there, right? So speed is essential, and I use speed as a way of, of measuring where I am, and I know that if I want to learn to play a song, it could be chords, right? Then if I can play them twice as fast as I need to, then when I get on stage and I'm nervous and, and you know, I feel the pressure of, ah, I gotta perform, then if I can do twice as fast, then I can certainly do it, even though I'm nervous. Uh, so, so it's a nice measure. But legato can really help you here. But the break is the title of, of this video. And that's the trick because you can take a break from all the other techniques. And what are all the other techniques? It's picking techniques. Like, you know, uh, economy picking, alternate picking, sweep picking, whatever you call it, string skipping. Then taking a break is magical fr from those techniques because everything becomes, you know, half the challenge, at least maybe 25% of the actual challenge when you take a break. It's like trying to jump accurately between two points. Put your foot here, put your foot there, and then jump back and forth. Do that as fast as you can and hit accurately every single time, right? But if you get an inlet, if you get to take a break and then say, okay, I need to put my foot down and bam, and you need to, okay, and then you can do it totally. First time off, you can hit the, the, right, the same spot with your foot every single time. But if you have to do it like bam, 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 you have a problem, right? So that taking that break in between picking a couple of notes and then using legato, which is the easiest quote unquote, right? Technique to learn. Then you can melt together your other uh, techniques and you instantly become much better at alternate picking because you can, you know, it's just, uh, I'm going to show you close up in a second what I really mean here. But when you do sweep picking, mixing it with alternate picking and directional picking, if you learn that as well, then suddenly because you can take breaks, then your, your, your whole skill level will go up a thousand percent. And of course you need to practice it in the right way. Um, using a metronome, being very, you know, being real, getting your timing right because not everyone can do something fast or something like that, but the, the whole challenge is to control it um, and to do the hammer-ons and pull-offs in the, in the most effective way. I, of course, have a course uh, online uh, that is focused on the, my, the whole period of time where I was 
ultra focused on this technique because I suddenly discovered what it could do for me. So I just try to go for the top level of what you can possibly do with that technique, how effective you can be. And that's why one of the sections in that program is focused on using legato on an acoustic, right? <laughs> because I thought, oh, you cannot do that. That's an inferior technique, legato, because you can't use it on an acoustic. I was very wrong. Um, so, but let's look into uh, that break, what it can really do for you, and then start incorporating this into your own playing, and then just see your all sync picking skills, the, the ones you have, or your sweep picking skills, just really be so much more useful from taking that little break using legato or hammer-ons and pull-offs. The most minute, the most detailed little uh, break you can make is in a, a good example of it, is when you're playing two notes for string shapes. Here we are in the 12th fret uh, with an E, e minor pentatonic shape. And if I want to play like two strings and four notes, right? So beginning the 12th here on the D string, play the 14th fret. Then I have the 12th and the 14th fret on the G string as well. And if I play that with alternate picking, it sounds something, something like this. And that's a bit of a challenge. That's one of the, <laughs> you know, a very high challenge when it comes to alternate picking because it has a lot of string shifting in there. You have to sh shift strings quite a lot because there's only three notes. It's a lot easier if you have three notes. So what is that? Why is that? You know, it's the same string shift, right? Here, I play three notes, and I go from to the next string, and then I go back again. It's just 11, 12, and 14 on both strings, right? It's the same thing as this, but there's just more string shifting in here. So why is this harder? Well, it's harder because there's more, because you don't get that break in between the string shifting, right? That's where the break comes in again. You know, if I play, two triplets on each string. So instead of playing, I play, right? Then it's even easier because you have that inlet, you have that break. That's the magic of, of taking the break here. But in this case, when we have uh, four notes, uh, 12 and 14 on both the D and the G string, then I can just hammer on the second note, right? Right? And that gives me a little break from the string, string shifting. Actually, I don't even have to really have that string shift of playing one note on one string and then another right after. I can have that break so I can play the whole thing with downstrokes or upstroke. Right? Um, but if I play something like uh, an another little very useful lick is to say, I'm still in the same thing. I'm just, uh, I'm just taking the ninth here. So I have the 12th and the 15th fret. Still the pentatonic, in my mind. And I introduce the 14th fret, the 9th. And then I have the 15th fret on the B string. I have a really cool little detail here. And if I play all of that with alternate picking, like that, then I have to do a, what I call a double string shift. So I go, so I go down, up, down, and then I hit that string there, so that's an inside string shift, right? And then right back to the high E string again, right? Right? And that's also pretty a tough thing. It's not that it's hard to, to, to do, you just have to do it a lot, right? Uh, and you have to do it accurately. But if we introduce some and some pull-offs, which is a, the most effective part of, you know, hammer-ons and pull-offs, then the hammer-ons are the weaker, weaker part, and the pull-offs are really, because you're actually picking or, you know, uh, plucking the string with your fingers up here, if you're doing it right. So, if you can introduce some of those, just a couple, then the whole thing, even though you have, you can, you can just take that double string shift and just make it a string shift instead. So, let's see if we can do that. So, you pick the first note on the, on the high E string in the 15th fret, pull off down to 14th and pull off down to 12th. Then I uh, hit the uh, 15th fret on the B string with an upstroke. You can use an, a downstroke as well, so you get an outside string shift. I use an inside here, so I pick that note in the 15th fret, and then I pick the note in the 12th and go right back up with picking to the high note, so I go, right? And then I get a downstroke as well there. That's why I'm using an inside string shift. All right, and then up.
right? So now I have a totally different thing going on. And, and if you practice this enough, you really feel the difference. So I only have to go boop, ba, 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 and then I can take a break from alternate picking because then... And that makes the alternate picking much easier. That's why it's so important to learn legato or hammer-ons and pull-offs first off. Because when you can do that, learning simple alternate picking techniques will really boost that and ma make your legato technique so much stronger. And you get to use and practice alternate picking as you play. <laughs> really fundamental lick that I um, recommend that you play. So so this is a very good example. And there's tons of other examples. You can just do two, you know, if you go up here to the 14th, 15th, and, and 17th fret on both the B and the E string. You can just, you know, if you want to play those two strings with alternate picking, that's quite a challenge. But if you just, if you just go, you pick the first notes on the B string, 14, 15, and 17, hit the first note on the high E string, and then just hammer on the rest of the way. You just get two notes of breaks in there, and that makes your alternate picking technique. Because now you have to go da 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 in your right hand, da 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 da, and that's so much easier than to go da 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 with no breaks, no breaks, no breaks. You have to keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, right? Here you can kind of get your hand in position for each da 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 da. And because you're mixing the two, you don't really hear the weakness of the hammer-ons up here as we talked about in a previous video, and if you haven't watched it, go back and do so, uh, about the weaknesses of, of legato here. But by combining the two, you really strengthen your alternate picking and you strengthen your legato. It's just a miracle. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.